have a Yukon 2005 Yukon Denali XL with a 6.0? Well, so do I. Welcome. But if you've been here before, thanks for coming back. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to check out my GMC Yukon playlist where I have tons of DIY repair videos that you can do yourself with very little tools. Just click above on the right hand corner and it'll take you there. I've saved thousands of people money because they did their own repairs on their GMC. Before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and of course hit the bell. Believe it or not, this really helps my channel. Okay, let's get started. Out of all the fluids that you're supposed to check, 99.9% .9 of the time, nobody checks the transmission fluid. If your transmission is acting funny, there's a lot of reasons why it's probably doing that. But nine times out of 10, it's probably gonna be you're low on transmission fluid. Now, if you don't like uh, working on your cars, you're a little skittish, believe me, I understand. But if you do have any of these symptoms, please immediately take your car into habit service because if you take it in now, it's probably be a lot cheaper. Uh, it could be, you know, fluid, it could be a little leak, but the more you wait, the more it's gonna cost you. So the first thing you wanna do is get familiar with the dipstick. Where is it? Pull it out, see what it looks like, um, see if it's low. You know, there's usually a line and they're telling you there's a medium as far as where the fluid should be. If it's low, you know, go ahead and add some transmission fluid to it. I think everyone would agree that it's cheaper to either have your transmission fixed, serviced, or you may have to replace it. It's probably cheaper than buying a new car. And what you're trying to do is avoid that. But if you have an inexpensive car, $2,000, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 for a transmission for your car, I understand it's gonna cost a lot. So you may wanna look at it and say, should I, you know, change the transmission or should I buy a new car? So you may want to examine and see if it's worthwhile putting a transmission in. If the car is only worth 500 bucks and the transmission is going to cost you $2,000, well, you may want to consider getting another car. So what I'm trying to do is have you avoid those kinds of decisions. If your car needs transmission fluid and you decide to put some in yourself, make sure you know what kind of transmission fluid your vehicle takes. There's a few types of transmission fluid out there, so be aware of what is the correct transmission fluid for your vehicle is. Now, what I did one time was go to a parts store and asked, and the guy gave me the wrong transmission fluid, and it cost me a transmission, so you don't wanna do that. So make sure you know the correct type of fluid your vehicle takes. If you don't know how to figure that out, look in your owner's manual or go online. If you don't have the internet, nine times out of 10, the library will have some information for you. Now, the other thing is some cars have a dipstick and some cars don't. I have a Kia 2015, it doesn't have a dipstick. So there's certain steps you'll need to take to figure out if you need transmission fluid or not for those types of vehicle. If you do have a Kia, click up above on the left-hand corner and it'll take you there and it'll show you how to check your transmission fluid. One of the things you wanna do first is look at your driveway. If you notice you're having drips on your driveway, now there's oil drips and there's transmission drips. The oil drips look more dark and brown looking. Uh, transmission fluid is a little more red looking. So get familiar with the color of the transmission fluid. If it, you ever find drips, you know what it is. Now, one of the first biggest symptoms is if you go in your car and you start your car and you put in gear and it doesn't move, then you got a serious problem. Either you don't have any transmission fluid in it or you have something seriously wrong. Now don't drive down to the parts store and get transmission fluid. You don't want to do that. Have a friend take you, put some fluid in, top it off, see if that corrects it. If it doesn't, unfortunately you have a bigger problem. The next one is when you get in the car in the morning, you start your vehicle, you immediately take off, you know the car hasn't warmed up and you're noticing that as you put it in gear, the car starts to vibrate a little bit as it's moving and then goes away. That's another indication you're probably you're low on fluid. 
The other thing, let's say your car is warmed up and let's say you're parked somewhere and you're ready to go. And, you know, you already know the car's warmed up and you put in the gear. Let's say it doesn't vibrate, but it takes a little while for it to get in gear and for it to move. You're probably low on fluid. Next thing, let's say you take off or you're driving and the car is going through its gears. As it's going through the gears, it's like jolting you, you know. It doesn't immediately engage, it kind of jolts. That's another indication you may need fluid. The other thing you want to be aware of, let's say you're driving and you step on the gas, but as you step on the gas, your RPM, so your engine is revving up, but your car's not going any faster. That's another indication your engine transmission is slipping, and you may, again, want to check the fluid. And lastly, when you put it in gear, you don't hear any noises, but it takes a second or two for it to engage. That's another good reason you're probably low on fluid. Now, if you have any of these symptoms and you put fluid in your car, you still have those symptoms, then immediately take it to a transmission shop. There's probably something serious going on with your car. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and of course hit the bell. Until then, We'll see you at my next video. Bye.